So we've been in the greenhouse business since 1953. My dad started it. I was never worried about... Meet Cole Cacciavelli. His dad, an Italian immigrant, used to grow flowers here wholesale for large grocery chains. So if you went and bought a poinsettia in Toronto, there'd be a good chance it was from here. Four years ago, the son, Cole, and a partner took a calculated risk to get into cannabis. Okay, so were you a former doper, Cole? <coughs> no, not at all. Both? No, not at all. And uh, when, I first, when I first got my hands on one of the plants, I always thought you smoked the leaves when we were in high school. I had no idea. He's got a much better idea now because there are no more flowers. Growing weed is all they do. Yeah. What's your goal? Uh, a little over 100,000, about 110. 100,000 kilos? 100, about 110, actually. His company in Leamington, southwestern Ontario, is in the middle of a grand expansion, growing the greenhouse space by 10 times to a million square feet of pot. What you see here is 700,000 square feet. There's another 200,000 square feet tucked away in behind that corner. And why are you doing this? This is a big investment. This is a huge investment, but uh, we're preparing ourselves for what we hope is going to be the recreational market come July. What you hope is going to be the recreational market? Yeah. So we're pretty confident that it's coming and we want to be ready. So banish the image of potheads dragging on doobies. This is what going legal looks like. Afria's slogan, we have a good thing growing. Pretty clinical in here. Oh, yeah. Thanks. For contamination, is that what you're... Absolutely. It just doesn't feel like a dope den, you know? Well, you got to wear that right inside. Oh, I do? Yeah. In fact, we even have to wear hair nets. It's just one more clue that everything about pot or cannabis is changing. Wow. Yeah, so again, welcome to the dark side. Nearly 60,000 square feet in this one greenhouse that's some grow up. Cole sees pot profit, not in the long green leaves we so frequently see in pictures, but here in the bud. We're either gonna make oil out of this or we're gonna use the bud and use it and sell it as uh, a smokable product. So this is the gold right here? This is the gold right here. And you talked about a haze. If you look at that, you can see a white haze there. They're called trichomes. And that's actually where the medicine is, the CBDs and the THCs. They're actually in that white haze. I think I have to smoke it before I see the haze. <laughs> you certainly see the haze if you smoked it. So far, Cole's business has been strictly for legal medicinal cannabis. Afria just got a deal to supply shoppers drug mart subject to Health Canada approval. You said your dad uses it now. Uh, absolutely. For he does. what? He uses it for his arthritis. He calls it his lubrification. And he's quite proud to show you how he can move his hands. Was it a tough sell to tell your dad you're switching from poinsettias to marijuana? Uh, not really. Um, again, we strip away that stigma. But you can't strip away the stigma. Canadians are wondering how this is all going to roll out and whether more people are going to use more dope to get hot. That's the fear. But we have to strip it away. We have to get beyond that because I can tell you it's much different now today. The money is starting to flow into uh, the science behind what's in this plant. Cannabis is not a wild weed anymore. Pharma's pouring money into it and Canadian businesses are staking their claim. There's increasing value in these buds more in potent and profitable cannabis oil. Those poinsettias that Cole used to grow, they didn't need to be locked up, but that's where the bud goes to dry in company vaults. And they're building more. In these level nine vaults, we can store up to $32 million worth of product in the level nine vault. $32 million worth of cannabis can rest in here. Absolutely. So right now we have six volts, and we're building six more. Beats chrysanthemums, if you ask me. <laughs> it, could, it could, maybe. <laughs> For so long, pot was hidden away, a secret pleasure. 
places like this, smoky cafes where you could enjoy your weed while thwarting authorities. They're still going, fueled by a black market in cannabis it's estimated at more than $6 billion. Toronto's Hotbox Cafe doesn't sell weed, but people come here to smoke or vape, part of the conventional pot culture that is about to change dramatically. Abby Roach, the owner here, has been operating for decades on the fringes of a legal business. Now she'll have to adapt and she wants a piece of the business opportunity too. Under the current proposed law, mm -hmm. you won't be able to operate. No. After how many years here? Uh, I've been open for almost 20 years. Currently, we're not technically allowed to operate now as well, but we do and we serve a public purpose. Uh, yeah. To me, if you don't include the people who are already in the industry and you choose to alienate them and push them out, then the, the whole the whole point of legalization fails. It's just the beginning of everything. They're still, mm -hmm. still way past six months until legalization. Clint Young sells medical cannabis in dispensaries which aren't actually legal in Ontario in the new world he wants them to be. You know, I expected the government to monopolize a side of the market, and rightfully so. They, they've done that. Really? Through. Rightfully so? Well, I mean, you've been doing it as a business for quite some time. Now they're yeah. going to take your business. Well, they're not, I don't think they're going to take my business. The licensed producers who are legally allowed to grow and sell will have to catch up to what's happening in the underground, right? The underground has bubbled for so long and is so creative that they need and to massive. catch And massive. It's massive. And massive. And, uh, and they need to catch up. I think the fear's got to stop. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, once all of this kind of settles in the dust, I, I, I hope for a, a fair market. And I, I don't think it's going to be, it's appearing right now. It's not a coffee shop only, so what do you call it? Well, it was a coffee shop, now it's a lifestyle store, and it's a cannabis lifestyle store. Hmm. This is it? Oh, these are cute, these little things. Yeah, they're great, right? So that's a, a great example of a well-crafted product, right? Something that you could have in your home and be proud of. But also Welcome to the slick new branding of the, the cannabis lifestyle. It's $335. $335. Yeah, well, Our vase yeah, doubles as a bong. Toronto, but it's a necklace. Beautiful, uh, it's stylish, high-end products for the consumer, there. like a vape. Put your herb inside of the cartridge, press a button to turn it on. Alan Gertner quit Google to co-found Tokyo Smoke, with six stores across Canada expanding to ten this year. And it could sit in your home and look like something something normal, special, beautiful. Why is this word normal keep coming up? Are you, why are you trying to normalize a street drug? What, well, like, I think it's already that? normal. And it's, and it's not a street drug, right? I mean, cannabis is heavily consumed in Canada. It is a medicine. It is proven to be a valuable medicine. And with legalization, cannabis is going to sit alongside the other psychoactives that are in our lives. Coffee, alcohol, and numerous others. It's not the same as coffee. Why not? Tell me why it's not the same. Tokyo Smoke is on the leading edge, part of a cultural revolution of weed, from the days of reefer madness to now cool cannabis. These stores can't sell pot in Ontario anyway, but under new laws might be able to in other provinces. I, you know, understand as Canadians we might not all align, but this is an opportunity, I think, for us to take a leading position in something that is going to happen anyways. I'm going to challenge you on the going to happen okay. because part of the going to happen is entrepreneurs like you saying we're going to make the product so appealing that you're going to no, use it uh, and consumption buy it is more. already high. I, I don't agree. Consumption is already high. So if you uh, take uh, the government at their word, a huge part of legalization of cannabis is harm reduction. We are already using it. So this is more feminine, these products here. Alan and his father have raised more than $10 million from investors in 10 months, and they've partnered with Afria, remember the grower, to brand their own Tokyo Smoke Pot, four different kinds. So this is what our package of cannabis looks like uh, today. Now, obviously, there's not cannabis in here. In here right now is just tea, uh, but you can see how we're trying to develop 
thoughtful packaging and thoughtful products in the marketplace. It's like a tea box yeah. with cannabis. Well, this right now has tea in it, so it is a tea box. There's a potential huge market here for you. Right. Tokyo Smoke Cannabis for sale, whether you can sell it here or not. That's what we hope. Consumers opt into branded experiences. We go to Starbucks. So people don't know where the coffee beans come from at Starbucks, but you buy Starbucks. You buy into a brand, into experience. Pot's power is about to be unleashed, but in the heady rush towards green gold and the cannabis lifestyle, is Canada ready? Come on, Susan, why isn't it like coffee? <laughs> this is a big change and, and really interesting conversations in there. Uh, we have a lot to learn uh, among that. Uh, what do we call this? Well, you know, it's funny. I kind of dug myself in a hole on this one because, you know, in previous times there were a hundred names for pot. You probably know. Of well, even when we do stories, like, sh should I say pot? Should I say weed? weed? Like, what do you, what do you say? No, Not marijuana. No. Although I said that earlier. Activists tell me yeah. that it is cannabis, which is the plant. And I got properly schooled on this at the Hotbox Cafe. Clearly, yeah. I am out of date on what I call this stuff. Apparently. Okay, big time. so, okay, big thanks, Cliff. <laughs> so, big time. Okay, so, dope is out. Here, I don't mind the word home. dope, but oh, it's yeah. a little out. It's, yeah. It's, I can see, I can just <laughs> see her kid when she leaves the room to her friend. You hear her? She called it dope. <laughs> dope is not the smoke dope, man. Okay, so, weed? Is, weed. is that okay? It's sort of out. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so cannabis is in. Yes. Cannabis is and in. And marijuana? Totally out. Totally Old out. fashioned, racist, get out of here. Yep. We don't want to hear it. Yeah. Wow. So when the states made cannabis illegal, it was because uh, the, the Mexican farm workers, whatever else not, were, were smoking cannabis during work. And a way to control them was to make what they loved illegal, right? So they added the word marijuana with the letter H into the law, right? So you had to have a special permit to grow it, but then they didn't give it to anyone. So it just became illegal. So when the Canadian government followed suit, they also adopted the same word. But the original word was from the Mexican word. Is there a new word that I don't know about? Well, there's always been there's slang always terms. Slang. Yeah, there's always fun, like ganja, like, yeah, stuff yeah, like that, right? Yeah, but no, yeah. ca cannabis is what it's just, yeah. it's just kind of the thing. Okay, so after it's legal, what is it gonna be called? I don't know. I think cannabis is making cool. a comeback, but yeah. someone's going to have to make a new word. Yeah. yeah. I think we'll leave that up to you, Susan. I think, yeah. <laughs> think we might have to be an innovator of these new yeah. slangs. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to name it, but Health Canada does call its laws on legal cannabis, cannabis, but does use marijuana in some of its descriptors. Descriptors, although it says marijuana is a slang name. The, the entire story was all so interesting and there's more to come in your series. Yeah, later this week, I'm going to look at what is in a name, what's in your weed. Turns out, you know, there are a hundred fancy names of strains, but you can get Bubba Kush at one dispensary and it bears little resemblance to Bubba Kush at another. That may have to change, so that's what's coming. Those words just roll off your tongue now. Let's take a quick preview of that. Yeah, you know, it is like a wine or it is like a whiskey where, uh, you know, you have very different taste profiles, very different smell profiles and very different effect profiles, which is, I think, the very interesting part about cannabis. 